Breaking news tonight, U.S. forces under attack in Iraq. The Pentagon confirming more than a dozen ballistic missiles fired from Iran, targeting Americans at two military bases. Iran state TV calling it revenge for the U.S. strike that killed its top commander. The images just coming in tonight, our team on the ground in Iraq. Nightly news begins right now. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening to our viewers in the West. We begin with breaking news from Iraq. Four days after that U.S. drone strike that killed a top Iranian general, Iran responded forcefully tonight, launching missile attacks on at least two Iraqi bases housing American and coalition forces. Richard Engel is in Iraq tonight with the latest. Richard, what do we know? Well, the U.S. military is confirming that Iran launched ballistic missiles, a conventional uh, military attack from inside Iran at two Iraqi bases, one in Erbil, where I am right now. We heard uh, what we believe were two explosions, not sure what the damage uh, caused, uh, how much damage they caused, and the other uh, base that was attacked in uh, the Al-Assad base, which is about 200 miles from the Iranian border. Uh, that, According to the military, about a dozen ballistic Ballistic missiles were launched. Uh, Iran says that these were medium range missiles. They put out some video. Uh, and in the video, you can see uh, three, maybe four different missiles uh, firing, leaving smoke trails. You can hear the distinctive uh, roar of jet engines. Uh, Military personnel on the bases told us that uh, they, they knew they were under attack. They went to shelters, uh, that they, they hunkered down in bunkers. Still no word of any American casualties. There are some reports uh, we have not been able to confirm of some Iraqi casualties. Uh, and, and Iran didn't just launch uh, this conventional attack. It is bragging about it. It is also launching a propaganda war. Uh, all of the different official Iranian news agencies are flooding the Internet, flooding social media with claims of responsibility, saying that this is a, a direct response to the killing of the, uh, the Revolutionary Guard leader, uh, Qasem Soleimani, uh, making numerous threats, saying that there will be more attacks, more rocket attacks, that Iran is prepared to mobilize its network of militia groups all across the region if the United States responds. So this is something that Iran is claiming responsibility for, wants its own people to know that it did wants its own people to know that it was launched by Iran directly, uh, that Iran is taking on the U.S. military, was undeterred by threats from, from President Trump, and now uh, Iran is waiting to see if there will be a response and saying if there is a response from the United States, it is prepared to escalate uh, both directly and through its network of allies and militias. Lester. Richard, you're in the northern part of the country. What is, what is the U.S. military mission there? What are those troops housed there do? Well, this is a, a, a big part of the equation. There have already been calls for U.S. troops to leave this country. Uh, U.S. troops, about 5,000 of them, are here in northern Iraq and also in Baghdad and other locations to fight against ISIS. That is their mission. They are not here to assassinate uh, Iranian generals. They are not here to drag this country into a proxy war. And now that there is an exchange of fire, those calls for U.S. troops to leave this country are, are very likely to get louder. Richard Engel in Iraq, thank you. Let's turn now to our Pentagon correspondent, Courtney Kuby. Courtney, what is the latest you're hearing from U.S. military sources? So we know now these ballistic missiles, they came in in about three different waves or three different salvos into both Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq and into a location up in Erbil in northern Iraq. Uh, we know now that the U.S. military and the Pentagon were the first to come out and say that, in fact, it, they were fired from Iran. And they believe that this is in direct response to the death of Qasem Soleimani only days ago. I think the big question is, where does this go from here, Lester? Uh, you know, the, is this, will Iran see this as a proportional response? They have said that they will, they will do some sort of a proportional response, response to the death of Qasem Soleimani. And... Will there be U.S. casualties? Will the damage be enough that the U.S., particularly the Trump administration, feels that they need to respond? So those are the two things that we're watching from here at the Pentagon. So far, we're not getting any indications of any U.S. military response, but officials here are huddled behind closed doors. They have been for several hours. This strike began at 5.30 p.m. 
Eastern time. And ever since then, the officials have been behind closed doors trying to figure out what the next step is, Lester. All right, Courtney Q be keeping us up to date from the Pentagon. Let's go to Ali Aruzi now. Ali is our NBC Iran bureau chief. He is in Tehran. Ali, what's late reaction there? Hi, Lester. Yes, well, confirming that there have been two waves of attacks by Iran uh, in, into Iraq for the retaliation of Qasem Soleimani's death. Uh, Iran is saying that they have mobilized all of their militias in this region and that they are ready to strike on Iran's orders. Uh, Iran says that if uh, the United States doesn't respond to these two waves of attacks, they will then stop attacking. But if there is a response from the United States, uh, Iran will target all U.S. bases in this region, that they will then launch all of their uh, militias to hit uh, U.S. assets and personnel in this area. The, they are also reporting that Lebanese Hezbollah is ready to attack Israel if the United States attacks Iran for these attacks. Iran is warning that if they do get attacked in retaliation for these attacks, they will wipe out Dubai if any U.S. airplanes take off from there and that they will hit Haifa in Israel as well if they are attacked. There are also multiple reports, Lester, here from the IRGC saying that all of their missile bases and underground missile bases have been opened and they're ready to launch their missiles if necessary. Ali Aruzi with a view on the ground in Tehran. Thank you. The White House says President Trump has been briefed on the attack. Our Kristen Welker is at the White House now. Kristen, what is the reaction there? Lester, President Trump is monitoring the situation in Iraq with the vice president and other top officials here at the White House. Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham releasing a statement just a short time ago that reads, quote, we are aware of the reports of attacks on U.S. facilities in Iraq. The president has been briefed and is monitoring the situation closely and consulting with his national security team. Now, this all comes after the administration was out in full force defending the decision to offend to kill Iran's top general. Lawmakers have been demanding answers, and they want the intelligence behind the attack released. It's an intensifying clash between the president and Congress, and right now, the White House not agreeing to declassify that intelligence. Now, a White House official tells NBC News the vice president called both Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer to inform them about the attack. In a statement, Pelosi saying, quote, the world cannot afford war. Lester. Kristen Walker from the White House where the uh, late night uh, lights are on. Our chief foreign affairs correspondent Andrea Mitchell is in Washington following this rapidly developing situation. Andrea. Well, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, is at the White House with the president, I'm told, and he has been the most hawkish uh, of all of the advisors on Iran. He advocated very strongly for the killing of Soleimani. He defended it vociferously. And as the top diplomat and the most experienced one in the administration, more than the new defense secretary, the acting head of intelligence, he is certainly right now the most powerful advisor to the president. Uh, there's some early analysis, and this could be the fog of war, but there's some early analysis that these missile strikes may have been deliberately misfired or not deliberately uh, hitting their targets as a propaganda warning, as a, a face-saving gesture by Iran, that they wanted to show some force, they wanted to show a reaction because of Soleimani, but they were much less targeted, much less precise than the September strikes against the Saudi oil fields, Aramco. And that is making uh, some people wonder here in, in the U.S., some analysts wonder in the government, whether or not right. this was deliberately just propaganda and whether they don't want to dial this up further. But we, of course, do not know how the president will respond. And, and to, to the point of the president, Andrea, we've seen the president do quick flips on many issues. But in this one, he seems to have locked himself in with the, the level and number of yes. threats about how he would respond if something like this that we've witnessed tonight took place. Absolutely. And he did not respond when the drone, when Iran shot down an American drone last summer. He did not respond when they w uh, hit the Saudi targets. So some are suggesting that this is an overcorrection. But in any case, you're absolutely right. He is locked in and we just do not know how he's going to respond because we still don't know, of course, whether there are American casualties. Yeah, he had talked about the 52 targets, uh, exactly. you know, keeping in mind the American hostages. Was, was that hyperbole or do we know that's a war plan? That is not a war plan, according to the Secretary of Defense. 
but the president repeated it twice. He tweeted about it over the weekend. He repeated it to the travel pool on Air Force One Sunday night, even after Mike Pompeo had gone on Meet the Press and other programs and said, we're not going to break international law, because that would be a war crime. The defense secretary has signaled that he would not follow air orders from the commander-in-chief to hit cultural targets. Uh, it is against a 1954 law. So... Uh, the president seemed to be walking that back today. Let's Andrea say. Mitchell, appreciate your analysis of all this as it continues to break. We want to turn now to Brett McGurk. He's an NBC News foreign affairs analyst. As a presidential envoy, he was responsible for coordinating all aspects of U.S. policy in the campaign against ISIS in Iraq, Syria, and around the world. The situation now escalating quickly. Where do you see it going? What kind of response might we see out of the U.S.? Well, Lester, I hope in the situation, or I've been in the situation room in national security crises, it's very important. Everyone's adrenaline is moving. Information is coming in fast. It's very important to try to slow things down, uh, be deliberative. And I really hope there is a voice in that room uh, that is really making that point. Let's slow down. Let's get our facts together. Um, a couple things here. I've been on all these bases. These are Iraqi bases. Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq is a huge, enormous facility. Um, we don't know the damage assessments. We're all very hopeful there are no American casualties. Um, this is an Iraqi base. So I think, first of all, these are Iranian attacks, ballistic missiles from Iran against Iraq. It's an attack against Iraq. And I think we got to be thinking now about the immediate diplomacy, the outreach, uh, including to Iraqi leaders to try to slow this down and think through the, the escalatory ladder we're on. All right. Uh, Brett McGurk, we appreciate your, uh, your insight on all this. The Iran crisis has focused attention in the Democratic presidential race on foreign policy. In a speech here in New York, before all this, these developments tonight, Joe Biden accusing President Trump of planting the seeds of this crisis. Right after, in an NBC News exclusive, Biden sat down with me where he defended some of his own decision making. Mr. Vice President, how are you? I met up with Joe Biden moments after his speech blasting President Trump's order to target Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. A president who says he wants to end endless wars in the Middle East is bringing us dangerously close to starting a brand new one. You gave a point-by-point -point, uh, analysis of how you think the Trump administration has gotten it wrong in Iran. But let me ask you, your president and your intel folks come to you and say, we've got, we've got evidence of an imminent attack against U.S. troops, against U.S. interests. Would Soleimani even be on your list of responses? Well, it depends on whether or not he was the essential part of the reason the attack was going to take place. I think, look, any president is uh, having sat in the Situation Room for over a thousand hours going through a whole range of things the last eight years. The question is, what's the second and third iteration of the first attack you make? Are you going to be better off or worse off? And, uh, and so uh, we don't know, at least I don't know, what concrete evidence they had about imminent attacks. Do you give a president, this president, the benefit of the doubt when he says there was intelligence of an imminent attack? I don't give him the benefit of the doubt of anything. You don't believe him? He's not been, well, it's, he could be true, but I don't give him the benefit of the doubt because he's lied so much about virtually everything. You're positioning yourself as the candidate with the most foreign policy experience, but with that comes a history to review. You voted in favor of the Iraq war. You, you've split hairs a little bit on the notion of, of the raid in bin Laden, but you had said that you were against it, recommended against it. I said we owe the man a direct answer. Mr. President, my suggestion is don't go. So why should your judgment be valued? Because I'd stake my judgment against, uh, against anyone out there. Look, I've, I'm the guy that started the effort to uh, make sure we took down uh, uh, the, uh, a guy uh, who was engaged in genocide in the Balkans, Slobodan Milosevic. I was, in, I was the guy when I was a senator that helped put together the Chemical Weapons Treaty. But on the issue of dealing with international uh, relations and our, 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 our standing in the world, I think that I'm, I'm happy to put my re overall record against anyone running for president, particularly this president. Many Democrats, Bernie Sanders uh, most recently talked about lack of energy, the need that for Democrats to prevail, there's going to have to be energy and excitement around a candidate, and that your stance on policies does not allow you to be that person. How do you respond <laughs> to that? <laughs> well, um... <laughs> I just think, uh, Bernie, I'll see you at the caucus. I'll see you in, in New Hampshire. I'll see you in the primaries. I mean, let the voters decide that. All I know is out on, on the stump, uh, things are feeling really good. 
There's a whole lot of energy, a lot of people showing up. Let me get to a place where your judgment has been questioned, and that has to do with your, your son working for a, a Ukrainian energy company. The optics of that. You're a pro. You, you understand the importance of optics. Do you feel like you've handed a gift wrap package to the Republicans? Not at all. And a, and a, and a, and a talking point? That no, will... look. Every major Republican who testified under oath from this administration said Biden was a man of integrity. What I'm asking about, not how you did your job or whether you did anything wrong, it's the optics. My son has spoken to it. He said he wished he had not done that. No one's questioned he did anything wrong either. Do you wish you had a redo? No, I don't wish I had. Look, no matter who the nominee is, do you think this president's not going to lie about them? Only thing I've noticed is the more he's attacked me, the more I've gone up in the polls. And by the way, I've released 21 years of my tax returns. Mr. President, release one of yours. You talk about corruption? Why won't you release any of your tax returns? Stop talking about corruption, Mr. President, unless you release your tax returns. Hush up. Step up. And there is much more of my conversation with Joe Biden. We have it posted on NBCNews.com. Still ahead as we continue tonight, we'll have much more on tonight's breaking news from Iraq. And up next, a new warning from Homeland Security, how Iran could strike here at home. Stay with us. All right, we're back now with the breaking news after Iran attacked the U.S. forces in Iraq tonight. And Homeland Security is warning Iran could also strike here at home with a sophisticated cyber attack. Here's Tom Costello with that. Amid heightened security at military bases and federal buildings, Homeland Security also warns of potentially disruptive and destructive Iranian cyber operations, targeting finance, energy, and telecom organizations. The U.S. says Iran has a history of cyber attacks. We know Iran has used that sophisticated capability over the years to destroy organizations, tens of thousands of computers rendered inoperable. From 2011 to 2012, hacking U.S. banks and locking out customers. 2013, accessing a dam's control systems in upstate New York. From 2013 to 17, targeting U.S. states, universities, the Energy and Labor Departments, and the U.N. The nation's energy companies regularly war game their response to a cyber attack that could shut off power to tens of millions. Pedro Pizarro runs power giant Edison International in California. The fact that you do have three distinct grids or separate systems in the United States actually, in this case, works to your advantage. It does because it, it suggests that if there is a major event across a U.S. grid uh, in, in any one of those subsections, uh, it would be very difficult for that to move on its own to affect the other side of the country. Also vulnerable, banks, water systems, air traffic control and corporations big and small. Tonight, Homeland Security is urging companies to back up their computers, disable non-critical Internet portals, update security software, and look for signs that hackers are inside. Lester? All right, Tom Costello tonight. Thanks. In a moment, we'll have more on the breaking news on Iran. But first, the warning about the dangerous virus outbreak striking infants. All right, up next tonight, we're in the thick of flu season, already widespread in 45 states. But doctors are warning of the surge in a different type of virus, so severe it's putting some babies in the hospital. Here's Dr. John Torres. Tonight, doctors on alert as hospitals around the country report a dramatic increase of RSV, a respiratory virus especially serious in babies and older adults. It's not just that we're seeing more RSV this year, but the cases that we're seeing are more severe and have more complications. So this is, this is Kira? This is Kira. And how old is she? Nine-month-old Kira has been in New York's Maimonides Medical Center for more than two weeks. Wow. Yeah. That has to be scary. Yeah, it was pretty scary. People talk about the flu so much, but That's we right. didn't hear about RSV as much, and so... Now I know, you know, it's like a big thing. The symptoms are similar to a cold or flu, congestion, decreased appetite, and fever. But doctors say the key difference is that RSV patients have trouble breathing. There's also a risk of developing more severe infections like pneumonia. There is a lot of uh, complications that can happen. Children can even die from this disease. The spike in this virus striking at the same time as flu season. The CDC estimates that more than 6 million people have already been sick with the flu. 27 children have died. The best advice for prevention, avoid large crowds, wash hands and kids' toys, and stay home when you're sick. Dr. John Torres, NBC News, New York.
A short break, and then we're back in a moment with more on tonight's breaking news. Iran launching missiles attacks on bases that house U.S. forces in Iraq. Stay with us. Before we go, let's get an update on our top story. Iran tonight launching missile attacks on two bases in Iraq that house U.S. forces. Richard Engel is there. Richard, what is the latest? Well, Iran says it has begun its response, its revenge for the U.S.'s killing of its top general firing. The U.S. military says over a dozen ballistic missiles at two Iraqi bases housing American personnel. One of them here in Erbil, uh, the attack here apparently not causing much damage. The other in western Iraq where U.S. troops were forced to go into bunkers. Iran says it will escalate this. It has launched a media campaign as well. Uh, saying that it can uh, not only mobilize its, uh, its proxies, but it will continue if there is a U.S. response. All right, anxious times. Richard Engel, thanks. Continuing coverage on MSNBC and NBCNews.com. I'm Lester Holt. Thank you for joining us tonight, everyone. Good night. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.